Coming up, an artist finds freedom through his painting and a story of forgiveness after a hit and run accident. Welcome to 700 Club Canada. So glad that you're here today. It's going to be a great show, isn't it? It really is. I'm excited. Yeah, we got some great, a great guest coming up. And I wanted to share a really famous quote from a British poet named Alexander Pope. He once said that screwing up or to err, we might say, is human indeed. Is that true, Bill? Markham? It is. I mean, the truth <laughs> is we're all flawed right. as human beings. Um, right. In our relationships, we all make mistakes. Um, and some of them are big. And so they're not so big, but mistakes do happen. That's true. But forgiveness, mm. like screwing up, is human too, yeah, right? Good. It's part of the other side. And God is not the only dispenser of forgiveness. You and I, we have the power to forgive as well. Yeah, I mean, even when the unthinkable happens, as it did to Harold, who lost his daughter tragically in an accident. And Harold shares how he was able to forgive the motorist who struck and killed his daughter and fled the scene. Wow, that's yeah, a strong... That's going to be a, a yes. good story that I, I think we all need to hear. We do. Because we all need to forgive people who've hurt us. Yeah, for sure. And you can't avoid that. But, yeah. but first, I have the privilege of sitting down with Mike Wills. This former professional hockey player became a successful painter who has had his works exhibited around the globe in places as far as Paris and China. He has shared how his struggles with loss, anger, and identity sent him on a path of discovery, and this is his journey. I could draw before I could talk. Um, I always had that ability to be a creative person. Mike Wills was born to paint. His talent was evident even at an early age, but so too were his insecurities. You weren't uh, a sociable kid. You were kind of isolated with this uh, gift, and you didn't know how to talk to people, but you knew how to create something to show them. I was definitely an angry kid because I didn't know how to express who I was, and I couldn't find out, uh, you know, just to be normal. And so I had a tough time dealing with that. So a lot of anger was built up inside me and I had to release it somehow. I used to punch on my concrete walls until my hands would bleed and, and break. As he grew older, Mike found an outlet in sports and specifically on the ice where he excelled. Hockey was always my first passion and you know, art was always on the back burner. So I had this mentality of I need to keep pushing, I need to be this better player and, and to make the next rung. So I was never enjoying myself through the process of hockey and I was always angry to the point where I was so determined that it became a negative aspect in my life. Mike moved up the ranks and worked towards his dreams of one day playing in the NHL. But even after earning a hockey scholarship, his insecurities and the weight of expectations began to affect his performance. There is a bunch of coaches that would tell you, like, just by their actions of not playing you, you're worthless. It was just, like, heartbreaking because you wanted to please these people. And by pleasing them, it was performance. And when I was very angry, I would play a certain way. And my parents and a couple people that have watched me throughout my career knew Already consumed by uncontrollable anger, a series of tragic events put Mike on the brink. I lost my roommate. Uh, he got a, hit by a car. And then I lost a friend with ALS. And then I lost a buddy that I always trained with. He electrocuted himself. And then a couple weeks later, um, uh, Walter, one of my best friends, he was cliff, ju cliff jumping back in Canada, um, and the wind blew him back on the rocks. So I buried Walter that Friday, and then uh, I had another friend that Sunday commit suicide, so I buried two guys in two weeks. And then I had to go play <laughs> a week later to go hockey. Questions about death and dying dominated Mike's already troubled mind. Trying to escape the pain, he turned to alcohol. And as his reckless off-ice behavior increased, his performance suffered. I didn't know if there was an afterlife. I didn't know um, 
you know, if, if there was a God or not. There was always something in my mind that I knew he was there, but I was always angry at him. And I kept yelling at the sky when stuff wasn't going right or going my way. And it wasn't until um, college on my hockey scholarship that I met Christ. And uh, a captain showed me when I was at my darkest point in my life of drinking and partying and women and, and not playing as a hockey uh, player. And you found your identity in that. And he said, no, like your identity's in who you are and in Christ. And he was there to help me, to show me Jesus and God and what it has to offer. Through mentoring and encouragement of his team captain, Mike began to pursue a relationship with God. The anger and confusion was being replaced by a peace that he could not understand. And it was at this time that his dreams of playing in the NHL gave way to his God-given talent. I couldn't play, so I had to paint again. And I had to go through the, the grieving pains of the loss, so I painted. And that was the light bulb that hit me, is my captain said to me is like he's made everything that you love whether it's music hockey art uh, you know fashion math buildings whatever it is so you actually look at a tree and go you know god's made that you know so that really changed my focus on life perspective and he's given me the gift to uh, create and i i didn't know that at the time mike left hockey on his own terms and began to pour his life into his art. The change in his heart clearly expressed on canvas. It was like venom. It would just, it would actually pour out of me and, and it was just black. All the canvases were dark. And as he's trying to chip away at me, you know, I'm getting lighter, lighter and lighter. So over the 10 years of painting, it's been a process from going from abstract, dark, to more fine-tune and in in, in, in showing my true you know, heart on a canvas. What inspires me is, is the colors that he's given us in this world. Um, you get to see it every day in a sunset. He makes a new sunset every day and a new, a new sunrise. Like, you know, he's, it's pretty amazing to bask in his greatness sometimes even when you don't agree with him because he's made everything that you love. Today, Mike is using his God-given talent as a professional artist living in Toronto. He paints with a freedom and joy that he never knew, but is now grateful to have. I realize he can take something like a wretch like me, <laughs> literally take me out of the hole, like the pit and bring me out and save me. And forever grateful for that. And so it is my privilege to introduce us and welcome to the 700 Club Canada, Mike Wills. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. How are you? Oh, I am fantastic. I, I really love your story. And in your, in your story, you said that what you love about painting is that you get to express yourself. And, and I think that is so true of art. So let me just ask you, like, what story are you currently telling and how has painting changed or progressed in your life? Yeah, um, it's currently progressed in my life through some of the trials that I've been getting through uh, throughout the years um, since we talked last. Um, I know that I've been dealing with a whole bunch of inner turmoil, inner trials, um, and God's been definitely helping me with that and uh, some supportive people through the community have been helping me with that as well. So, so as you can see behind me, that uh, I've been dealing with kind of the stormy oceans and the chaos that uh, always I kind of had inside me through hockey. So I, I've been expressing that and painting it out. So, yeah. Oh, it's well, I love your art, by the way. I mean, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> and, and I love the imagery. And, and I, you know, the, even the art behind you, it's these boats emerging from the storm. And I think that is so powerful because... In the Bible, storms are often represented by troubled water. And yet, yeah, you know, we read about how Jesus calms the storm. And so, yeah, you pick boats. Why Why boats specifically? What do boats speak to you? Uh, I've always, well, the colors um, of, of ships and then also, like, the fact that, like, like blues and, 
and dark tones and, and ships kind of represent like almost my, myself of mm. like this chaotic, you know, rugged, old kind of beat up ship that's going through trials and storms and getting hit wave after wave. And then it's just always like, uh, you like forever changing, right? Like it's like ships mean that they're always like setting sail or there's calm seas or it's just something that I've always resonated with, um, playing hockey on the East coast, you know, I've mm. song that seen so many ships before. So just to portray that in paintings now is just like, I don't know. It was just a series I just needed to get out. So. Yeah. And so your art really is an expression of what God's been doing deep inside of you. And that, mm -hmm. and I love that, but you also paint a lot of cityscapes and why did you pick that as a focus point for your life? Yeah, back in the day, um, I've always had that uh, kinetic energy with the cityscape, um, the connection where I've always wanted to travel and, and play in big cities and then uh, paint kind of the atmosphere and the, the lights and what the city uh, brings to uh, like just your soul. So I wanted to kind of portray that. And now I'm moving on to, you know, what am I getting out of? my soul now like what i like all the baggage and the, and the garbage that you've built up over time um what like how to just like release that so that's what you see in my paintings now is, oh well is, yeah i i love that because you know jesus said a, ci a city lit on a hill cannot be hidden and i think that's, that's really true. powerful it's like you're you're tapping into this deep yearning for not only healing and peace and calm that jesus brings but also an expression that transforms people. Now, one of the cool things for you, you've been on the international scene, your work has been shown yeah. in Paris and in China. And so yeah. tell me, what has that been like uh, to have your art exposed to a large diversity of people who are interested in your yeah. work? Um, it's been nothing but a blessing. Uh, it's been such a whirlwind of, of, of just like last time we talked, it's, there has been so much like ups and downs and then getting to see my like my art and just going over to Paris and showcasing myself and uh, get to see like my paintings go up against some of the best artists around the world and especially in Paris you know that's like France is known for art right yeah. in Europe and that's so just to see that and it's truly amazing so how do most people respond to your art? Like, what do they what do they say to you? How does it make them feel? Um, is it an yeah. opportunity for you to express some of those things with them? Yeah, they, they always say, oh, I love the energy. I love the colors. And there's mm -hmm. something different about your art. And I'm like, yeah, that's definitely what I'm bringing to the table is that I feel like there's a, um, not just a spiritual side, but just like telling my story side. Like, so um, you have been, you know, given such talent and God is like ordained it and he's like, you need to use this. So like, I'm, that's what I want to do is, is just show that to people. And then they really go, wow, there's something different about your paintings. Like, what is it? And then I kind of get to tell my story of, of all these like ups and downs through hockey and, and life. And then now that I'm a painter, so <laughs> it's crazy. Well, you are an overcomer. And I yeah. think that's a, a story of hope and reconciliation for so many of our viewers who are watching and going, you know, maybe God has forgotten about me or he's done with me. And you could have mm -hmm. taken that route, but you chose instead to express yourself. And for you, it's through art and brilliant art. Um, and, you, yeah. you're, and, and I really love the fact that you're using it on purpose. It's intentional. So yeah. talk about hope right now, especially in the critical times that we're facing with COVID, you know, around the world. How important is that for people? It, oh, it's, it's huge. Like with the isolation factor that we always have and then the, 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 the I would say that the depression that sets in right. and then you've got like no community, you've got, you can't even connect with people. So like with, with trying to give someone hope is, is so hard. But hopefully, like, my paintings can show people, like, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Like, it's not over. And, you know, there's as much as you're in the chaos and, and trials right now, that there is hope 
learn uh, like yawning before, like after. So I, to me, it's you have to know that God's got you in this situation, and He's trying to teach you something, and He's trying to like almost isolate you. That let's let's work on, let's cultivate something out of you, right? And it like instead of just doing your nine to five job or something that you just don't love anymore. Um, what is it that you desire, right? And I'm trying to show people that, like, through the process of painting and showing videos and stuff, that you actually have the ability, like, the skill set and the tools that God has given you and the power to do something with your life and not just, like, a job. You have your passions that he's put inside your heart, and that's what you got to do. Oh, I love that. The point is, maybe you feel like that boat in that painting and you feel like you're being battered yeah. around, but if Christ is with you in the boat, he calms the storms. Mike, thank you so much for being with us here today. It was really great to talk to you and, and see your art and your expression. It is bringing hope to so many. So after thank the you. break, an unspeakable tragedy leads to an act of forgiveness that changes a community. Let the Word of God transform you as you listen to God is for us. Verses of salvation, peace, and victory. Read by Pat Robertson. These powerful verses from Romans will build your faith. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Call now to get your copy of God is for us. Available now. On January 16, 1996, Harold McDonald was running errands when he received a phone call no parent wants to get. My pastor had told me to rush to the hospital because Shani had been in an accident. By the time Harold arrived at the hospital, his six-year-old daughter, Shantea, whom he affectionately called Shani, had died. I couldn't believe it. It's like something punched me in the gut and took the life out of me because that's all I, I had. Harold, who had sole custody of his daughter, learned she had dropped a picture she had drawn for him in the street. When she went back to pick it up, a car hit her, leaving her with fatal injuries. In his pain and grief, Harold turned his focus toward the driver, who never stopped. I wanted to be pleasing to God. And whatever I can do to be that example, I was willing to do it. Even if it hurts, I was willing to forgive. By now, the heartbreaking story of Shawnee's death had hit the local news. What touched the community even more was Harold's response when reporters asked, if he had a message for the person responsible for taking his daughter's life. I pleaded with him to turn himself in. And I said, I love you and God loves you. The next day, Mandrell Sweeney turned himself in to the police. Harold didn't press charges. The young man was charged with the misdemeanor for leaving the scene of an accident and released on bond. The following day, Harold visited Mandrell at his home. And here this young guy, 18 years old, and saying, Harold, I am so sorry. I didn't see, I didn't see your baby. I didn't see her. I, 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 I was going too fast. And uh, would you please forgive me? As I extended forgiveness to Mandrell, Mandrell began to just cry. And he came and he hugged me. And I had the opportunity to, to pray with him. Forgiveness wasn't for Mandrell, it was for me. And it started the process of healing instantly. More than 500 people gathered at Shawnee's funeral. I was an example to our community on how to forgive, how to give grace, how to love, how to just let it go. A year later, Harold fulfilled his dream and opened his barbershop. As he emerged as a strong pillar in the community, he was still grieving the death of his daughter. I would wake up where I would dream that she was here with me. And the prayers I would pray is just, God, help me. 
Lord, help me. By then, Harold's story and gesture of forgiveness had faded from the public eye. Yet some still remembered. One was Delonica, who recalls talking to Harold in his shop about his daughter. That man who was on television, his personality, his, his ability to forgive, I, I felt like he was just unreal as a, as a person. That started a friendship that led to their marriage three years later. During that time, Delonica saw on a deeper level the grief her husband was going through. He still hurt. Did he forgive? He, he had nothing but good to say about Mandrell. There was no denial that Harold loved this man with a godlike love. Harold believes that forgiveness, along with Delonica's prayers and support, brought healing and an end to the nightmares. The type of life uh, that I would be living if I would not have forgiven Mandrell would have been a life of pain, life of revenge, and life of anger, and I would not have met my wife. But because of it, I'm able to live in the fullness of life. On January 16th, 2021, as they've done for years, the family released balloons to remember Shawnee's life. One balloon for each year. Releasing the balloons is significant of releasing love and peace and joy and happiness. And this is what I believe that Shani was on this earth for. Ever since, Harold found his own healing from grief. He gives people in his barber's chair more than a haircut. He offers counsel to those struggling with forgiveness. The couple also have a weekly radio show where they minister to married couples. They also co-authored a book on Harold's journey of forgiveness that led to his total healing. Let God heal your heart and it doesn't matter if it's seven times 77, give it back to God and say, I choose to forgive and trust God to heal you. God can heal you and he can set you free from all the struggle, all the pain, all the heartache. You gotta trust that God got it. What a story. It's so true. You've got to trust that God's got it. That is the freedom statement, isn't it? So let me ask you, are you struggling to let go of something? Like really, are you holding on to something and you don't want to let it go? Maybe you're holding on to unforgiveness. So easy to do. Look at Harold's life. Forgiveness sets you free. It set Harold free. It doesn't mean that you don't grieve what was lost though. See, grief, it's a natural response to loss and pain, but it does mean that you don't need to be driven by revenge or the need to fix something or to hold on to that anger. See, forgiveness enables you to grieve. I just find that so interesting. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but I can find it hard to grieve something, to actually feel the loss of something it usually means I'm holding on too tightly. And for some of you, you've not been able to grieve your loss because you actually won't forgive. Will you take a step toward forgiveness today? Listen to what Colossians 3.13 says. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Now, there's two key words in that verse I want you to notice offense and the word must. See, I think the trend of our time is to be easily offended. And I think that one of the reasons that we aren't able to move forward in our life is because we are so quick to be offended. You see, offense is something, it's really a lack of forgiveness. We are holding something against someone else and that will keep you in bondage. I want to leave you, lead you through a simple prayer. If you've identified with the story or even anything that I've said and you think that's you, would you pray this prayer with me? Lord, I give you what I have lost, my hurt and my pain and even the offense that I took. I can't carry it anymore. Come and heal me. I choose to forgive. If you need help 
with this step of forgiveness, we have a resource for you. Call us at 1-855-759-0700. We'll be right back. We've been reminded in today's show the power of forgiveness and how God's word so clearly equips us to enable us to do it, right? Which is so powerful it, and necessary. And so necessary. We all need a lot of coaching in this area, I think, in our life. <laughs> Especially so, on forgiveness. Right? I, so I'm really thankful for what Pat Robertson mm -hmm. is now offering as our thank you to you who are monthly givers. Um, it's called God is For Us, and they're verses of salvation, peace, and victory that come out of the book of Romans. Pat reads to us. So if you haven't yet committed to be a monthly giver, this will be the thank you. So maybe that will encourage you to join our 700 Club Canada partners. Yeah, and maybe you'd like to help us by joining Pledge Express. It's a much easier more convenient way for you and it helps us as well and so if you'd like to become a partner today with us or join pledge express why not call us at 1-855-759-0700 and we'd love for you to join us today i loved your conversation with mike today and I, how's your painting skills, Phil? I'm just wondering, <laughs> are you able to paint like that? I can express myself with not painting, not painting. No. You paint with words. I paint with words. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to be an artist, but in a different way. But you know, I think yeah. what I loved about it was, for me, it was the image he was able to capture of how many times I know, like I feel like that battered ship. Yeah. I feel like I need to forgive the, even right. people that have hurt me. Yes. And what Jesus does is he not only holds our boat together, but he navigates it and he helps us to forgive. Um, that's yeah. so powerful. It's so true. And I've certainly seen in my own life and in the lives of those as, as a pastor myself and those that I've mentored, forgiveness is such a big deal. And I mentioned earlier that, you know, we're really, we're really in these days, I think especially, taking offense to everything. Oh, it's so true. And that is actually not helping any of us move forward. So if I can encourage you to just let those things go to God, those things that easily hurt you, that you can choose to be offended or you can choose to trust God with it. Yeah, and, and that's so good. And our power verse really speaks to this. In Ephesians 4.32, it does say, and this is from the Bible, <laughs> instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted and forgiving one another. Just as God through Christ has forgiven you. He set the example. Exactly. So that's the example to well, watch. And I've learned that forgiveness is setting a prisoner free and discovering that the prisoner was me. Right on. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. To contact us, visit 700club.ca.